Hi everyone, glory to Jesus Christ. I received a message a couple days ago from someone who asked an excellent question and I'm not sure that they were expecting a video response but I do prefer to respond this way because it's uh, it's quicker and it's a little bit more personal I think and also it means that the message can maybe reach some other people as well which could be awesome. So. The question that I got in this message was, well, all of your arguments seem to be based on faith and belief. Can you prove that God exists using logic and rationality? Now, this question is asked all the time all over the world, and it's a great question. And I respect sincerity a lot, and I think God respects sincerity, too. Um, so I will always try my best to answer a sincere question to, you know, to the best of the ability that I have. As long as it's actually sincere, you know, I'm not going to let someone pick a fight with me, but I think this person was honestly asking questions. So here's my, you know, here's what I have to offer about that. Okay. The, the short answer is that if the gospel message could be proven with scientific investigation, there would be no more faith at all because it would be a fact. The same way it's a fact that certain elements go into the buildup of, for example, water. <laughs> um, we can't investigate God like that. If we could, because there would be no more faith, there would be no love of God. Because love, by its definition, is a choice. Love is not an emotion. It's not infatuation. It's a choice. Belief is a choice. You cannot have it without choice. Because then it isn't love. You can act like you love someone, but if you are somehow being compelled to do that by them or otherwise, by someone, you are slave. That isn't love. That is compulsion. That's slavery. That is a utter lack of free will. So in that sense, glory to God that he has revealed himself in a way that permits choice, that permits love. He has not left us comfortless. He has not left us in utter confusion. Um, for example, even aside from the 2,000 year witness of the church and from thousands of years of Jewish history before that, aside from that, aside from the Holy Gospels, or actually, can I rewind for a minute? Not aside from, in addition to those things, God has revealed himself in creation on earth and in the universe, however many dimensions, however, however, how fantastic the universe is. And of course, we really have no idea. Space is un unimaginably vast, unimaginably vast. We see God in that. I'm quoting from the Wisdom of Solomon. Again, this is a, this is a book of wisdom literature which means it's not in the Protestant biblical canon. But if you pick up a, a Bible that has the Roman Catholic canon or the Eastern Orthodox canon, or that has a section in it that's called the Apocrypha or the Pseudepigrapha, sometimes they're called the Deuterocanonical books, you will have the Book of Wisdom. And it's part of the traditional Christian canon, by the way. It was removed by Martin Luther only about 500 years ago, so it's a good book. From the greatness and beauty of created things, I'm reading here from chapter 13, from the greatness and the beauty of created things, the creator is seen by analogy. And then talking about people who do not see it this way, Solomon writes, they are not to be excused, for if they were able to know so much with their ability to investigate the world, how is it possible? that they did not quickly find the Lord of all these things. What a great statement. How is it possible to experience the richness of the world 
and not conclude at some point that there's something going on here. Wisdom of Solomon is a fantastic book. But let's stay on track here, because if I'm not careful, I'll stop and I'll just read the whole book again. It's short. It's only 19 chapters. Read it. Um, so it is that faculty for spiritual discernment that augments the five senses that you and I already possess. I don't think we have five senses. I think we have at least six. And I think the sixth one is it's in the heart. And it is that sense that perceives the invisible, noetic reality that underpins everything. And that is the spiritual discernment that comes through, number one, God's grace, of course, but also through prayer, through persistence, through participation in the sacramental life of the church. So at a certain point, really, it becomes irrational not to understand that or not to see that. And that is not an insult. Please, you must understand, I'm not talking to any specific person or group here. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just saying, well, I, it's pretty clear. Without that acknowledgement of that sixth sense, there is no way, I don't think, that we're going to see God. Because it is that sense that allows us to open that door, to kind of have a common point of reference with God. Think about it this way. If you have someone who's blind, if they've been blind from birth, let's say they were born without eyes, so they have never seen anything, no light, no shapes, no shadows, no movement, nothing, no eyes, zero zip zilch nada. Guess what? No matter how brilliant of a rhetorician you are, no matter how many facts you have, no matter how persuasive you are, no matter what your talent is in terms of teaching, you are not going to be able to explain to that person what light is. That's not an insult against them or against you. It can't be done because there's no point of commonality there. So it is with God. That commonality is that sense that is the throne of God in the heart. So I think we need, we need to think that way. We are not limited to five senses, right? Now, science has proven there are more than three dimensions. So it's not, it's not um, out of the realm of possibility to have six senses or seven or eight. Okay, going on. All right. Oh, one more passage. And you should have this book in your Bible. This is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. And this is Jesus Christ himself speaking against lack of discernment. Chapter 12. Jesus said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, Oh, a shower is coming. And so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, Oh, hmm, hot weather. And so it is. Hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you don't discern the times? Those are the words of Jesus. So I don't really have to do any kind of explanation for that, hopefully. Now, I'm up against nine minutes. I do not want to make this video too long, and then I have to do it all over again because YouTube poops it out. So I'm going to be back in a hot second with episode two. <laughs> okay, so... Here we go.